I once loved this island. This is where I found peace and quiet. The peace of waves forever breaking on the shore, the quiet of tranquil moonlight on the sea. But when the night wind rises and the fingers of the fog steal in, they say you can hear voices. They say it's the dead growing restless and calling to the living. I never believed it until that evening Bai came looking for me. But you always knew that marriage was out. I never lied to you. But I always thought that... Look, Vi, whatever you thought is your business. But it's all over. It's finished. You should never have come here, and you'll be doing yourself a favor if you take the first boat back. I can't go back without you. Please come back with me, Tom. Just tell her you changed your mind. Nobody even knows I'm on the island. I chartered a private boat over. I won't even go back to the club. I'll quit right now. Why, will you, for heaven's sakes, realize when a good thing is over? A second-rate singer like me doesn't fit in the picture anymore. I hear she's quite young and has money, too. Why, please understand, I'm in love with her. I need you, Tom. No one will ever love you more than I do. Sorry, Vi. I'm sorry for everything. I still have your letters. I've never been on a lighthouse before. Show me the light, darling. throw anything like that away. You never know when they might come in handy. I wonder how she'd feel if I read them to her. Putting in pertinent footnotes, of course. Or maybe I'll have to show them to a lawyer. I'm sure he'd know what to do with them. How would a lawsuit fit in with your music career, Tom? How would the piano genius of jazz feel about that kind of publicity? Darling, you look as if you were ready to kill me. Now, you get this straight. I'm marrying Meg. And you get this straight, Tom Stewart. No one will ever have you but me. Help me! Please, Tom, help me! Take my hand! Pull me up! Save me, Tom, please!
Sandy. What are you doing? Sandy, look, do me a favor, will you, and run out and play somewhere. I'm busy. I... Don't you like me anymore? Sure, I like you. I love you. I just want to be by myself. Where were you last night? The Emersons had a beach barbecue, and everyone on the island was there. Meg was looking all over for you. Sandy, please run along. Okay. Sorry to disturb you. I almost forgot. The wedding announcements came, and Mommy wants you to look at one before we send them out. There's only a week till the big day. Yeah, okay, okay. What's that? Seaweed. I know what's the matter with me. I'm seeing things. I'm letting my imagination run wild. Is it my conscience? No. Why should it bother me? I didn't do anything to buy. I didn't kill her. It's her own fault she's dead. She came out here of her own accord. She leaned against the railing, she fell. It wasn't my fault if it gave way. Why should I be blamed? I had nothing to do with it. Anyway, nobody ever needs to know. Nobody will even connect me with her. Why should they? Except for this watch of hers. All right, bye. That's the end of you. someone else? Oh, no, no. It's just that I wasn't expecting anyone. Uh, what are you doing up here? I'm looking for you. What are you doing up here in this old lighthouse? Well, I... At least it's quiet. I, uh... I, I wanted to think. I guess I'm worried about that Carnegie Hall thing next month. I wonder if I'm good enough. Of course you're good enough. You're the best jazz pianist in the world. Did I? Smell perfume. It is perfume, our page. Oh, so cold. 
cold and gloomy in here. Gives me the creeps having that big lap staring at us. Never liked it up here since the light stopped working. Glad they're going to tear it down. Come on, let's go outside to the sun's warm, huh? Sending the gown tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna love it, Tom. Ooh, are we supposed to see about a tie for Dad? And I forgot. I'll be so glad when this whole thing's over with, won't you? It'll only be a week more. We can't wait that long, can't we? to go to the mainland and be married this afternoon. About the wedding? Well, I was never for a big deal anyway. I only agreed to it because you wanted it. Doesn't it matter that I still want it? Please, Meg, please, do this for me. Just go away with me right now. I told you that's impossible. My mother and father to think of as well as you. Then I'll have to go by myself. What about the wedding? What about it, Meg? If you go, there won't be one, that's all. Meg. And now we will perform the greatest of all magic accomplishments ever performed on this island the secret cabinet. As you will please notice, the cabinet is empty. Tom, Tom, you're not paying any attention. Don't you want to see the secret cabinet? Oh, sure I do. I, I wouldn't miss it. Go ahead. If I close the doors to the magic cabinet and say the magic words and tap it with my magic wand, abracadabra, we no longer have an empty cabinet. It is now filled with jelly beans. Tom Stewart. Fine one you are. Oh, Sandy. Sandy, if you hate me for the rest of your life, I deserve it. I couldn't hate you no matter what you did. No matter what I did? No matter what. Even like fighting with your sister? Meg's mad at me, you know. She'll get over it. Besides, if she doesn't, you'll be free to marry me. Okay. From now on, you're the other woman in my life. Okay, honey. You run along now. I got some practicing to do. I'll clean up your magic stuff. Bye. Bye, Tom.
Who's there? It's Mrs. Ellis, Tom. I brought you some flowers. Is something the matter, Tom? What makes you say that? You sound upset. Perhaps I'd better check you another time. Oh, no. No, Mrs. Ellis. No, come in and sit down. Thank you for the flowers. They're lovely. Sit down right here. Mrs. Ellis, I want to ask you something. <laughs> Sounds kind of silly, but... Well, do you believe that the spirits of the dead can come back to haunt the living? Do you believe in ghosts? What makes you ask a thing like that? You haven't answered, Mrs. Ellis. Nobody believes in ghosts nowadays. Well, do you? If anybody was to ask me seriously, I would have to say no. Of course, a real estate agent runs into many strange things in an empty house sometimes. What kind of things? Well, there was a family named Samuels. They lived in that last house down the beach. One day, their little boy took his dog and went fishing. They never came back, and nobody knows what happened to them. After the Samuels moved away, I signed three tenants during that first month, but not one of them would stay more than a few days. Yeah, yeah, I know that story, but that doesn't prove anything. They complained about an unseen dog whining and scratching at the door, but that wasn't what made them break their lease. It was the cold up in the boy's room. You could feel it in your bones, a deathly cold. The walls were always damp and stained with seawater. Whatever caused it, the thing came back every night. Did you ever see it, Mrs. Ellis? It's been many years since I've seen anything. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting. Did, did anybody see it? People say they found wet seaweed on the boy's bed. Well, but you can't call wet seaweed a ghost, can you? Tom, what's wrong? Why do you ask that? You're running away from something. Well, Tom? Well, something I... I can't believe exists myself. If it does exist, you can't solve anything by running. Then, on the other hand, if it doesn't exist, there's nothing to run from. You're a very wise woman, Mrs. Ellis. Thanks for talking with me. Oh, and thanks for the flowers. They're beautiful. Come back soon.
can't hear me, can you? Because you don't even exist. You're a shadow, perhaps. Light, perhaps. Nothing more. But, by just in case you can hear me, I've come to tell you this. I'm not going to pay any attention to you anymore. I'm going to live my life right here. I'm going to stop running. And I'm going to marry Meg. Bye. I'm going to marry Meg. That's all I came to say. It's going to be just as though you never existed. I'm going to marry Meg. Just in case you can hear me by. Good night. And goodbye. No one will ever. Help yourself. Okay. Mrs. Elf said you wanted to see me. What about? I, uh, sit down. I wondered if you'd, uh, talk to your sister Meg for me. Tell her how sorry I am. Okay. You tell her I behaved like a little boy and I'm ashamed of myself. I'll tell her. She didn't call anything off. She didn't? Uh-uh. Guess she's ready to make up. Just like grown-ups. <laughs> Are you all ready? Yeah, I'm all ready. Have you got the ring and everything? Mm -hmm. Let me see it. Lucky. Can I try it on? Sure. What I really want is one of my own. Well, you might be just a little bit young. I know. Dear little Sandy, she's just a child. Why, do you know how old I am? I'm practically nine. Why, in China and, and Borneo and India and places like that, girls already have husbands at my age. Hmm. I'd get married tomorrow if I could find someone like you. Can't I please try the ring? I just put it on your finger. Put what on my finger? The ring. I don't have the ring. Sandy. Sandy, tell me the truth. Didn't you see anything right there? There wasn't anything to see. You heard. I'm sorry. Well, I'll, I'll find the ring later. You run along now, Sandy. I, I've got to finish my practicing. Goodbye, Sandy. I'll see you later. All right, bye. I know now you've come back. But it won't do you any good, because I'm going to marry Meg. Now, 
What'd you do with the ring, Vi? Vi, what did you do with that ring? You know what's wrong with you? What? You've been working too hard, getting ready for your concert. You've had a lonely life here on the island, away from all your musician friends. It's been getting you down. But I'll take care of all that once we're married. Maybe you better tell your mother that the wedding's on again. I never told her it was off. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? You know, the first thing you're going to do is have a long vacation. A whole month honeymoon in Europe. Uh-uh. You know how many hit records I'd have to sell to pay for that? Dad's footing the bill. It's his wedding present to us. He wanted to tell you himself, but he won't be here to write before the wedding. And when we get back, I'm going to have a big party so I can get to know all your friends. Big party? We'll be living in a three-room apartment. Mother and Daddy won't mind if we use their house in Bel Air. They say now that I'm getting married, it's too big for them anyway, so they'll be turning it over to us for good one of these days. Are you trying to spoil me? There's nothing I'd like better. Come on up to the house a minute. I want you to see something. What? My wedding gown. Isn't that supposed to be bad luck? You're not superstitious about things like that, are you? No. I'm not superstitious. My garden's full of roses this month, and it seemed about time to bring you some fresh ones, so... Hi. Hello. Well, hello, stranger. Hi, Kitty. Where have you been keeping yourself, lady? Uh, Some beautiful gifts have arrived, and you haven't seen any of them. Hey, look at this. But you're a dear anyway. Champagne. Fix your drink. Mmm. <laughs> look, another one. Uh-oh, there's my girl. Hi, pal. Hi. Is everything made up with you and Nick? Well, I'm working on it. Hi, Miss Ellis. Tom. Another pair. People must think newlyweds live on lettuce by candlelight. This makes nine pairs of candlesticks and 12 salad bowls and more coming every time the mailboat arrives. Meg got her wedding gown today, and Tom, it's simply a dream. What a bride goes through to make herself attractive for you men. It took three fittings to get the bodice right and three layers of net to make the skirt full enough. Well, hardly seems worth it. After all, I'm only marrying her, so you'll be my mother-in-law. Sandy, see if there's a window open. There's a cold draft all of a sudden. What's that sweet smell? Mm, must be the fresh roses. My roses never smelled like that. It's a woman's perfume. Help me make room for these, dear. In my day, it wasn't candlesticks, it was teaspoons. Mr. Hubbard and I received no less than 78 of them when we were married. Maybe that's a reason for his attitude. When he went back to the mainland, he said he was going to go right to the office and stay there until the wedding. I'm sure you'll never treat your wife like that, will you, Tom? Or will you? He isn't here, Mother. Where is he? I think Meg took him to look at her dress. My wedding dress! What is it? What did she find? Seaweed. Tom? Yes, Mrs. Ellis. I'm in here. I brought you some honey. Don't get up. I'll just put it on the bar here. 
Thank you, Mrs. Ellis. I really brought the honey only as an excuse, because I knew you were upset. Tom, there's nothing supernatural about what happened to Meg's dress. There must be a logical explanation. I know, I know. But that seaweed, it's just like that Samuels boy. There have been no recent deaths, Tom. No. Anyway, I'm sure of one thing. I've had enough of her. Who are you talking about? Oh, a, a friend I used to have, a girl named Vi. She came over here to the island to see me. We, well, we quarreled up in the lighthouse. And, well, at any rate, she went back to the mainland. Are you sure that's what happened? What do you mean, am I sure? Well, maybe she didn't go back to the mainland. Maybe this girl Vi is still here and is playing tricks to get even. Now, where do you suppose a woman could hide on this island? Who's hiding? Never mind, Sandy. Things will work out. You'll see. People always saying never mind. Because there are some things that grown ups don't want children to know about, Sandy. Those are always the most interesting things. Who is Tom looking for? Never mind. Betty's looking for at the lighthouse. He's always hanging around there. The lighthouse is a very dangerous place, Sandy. It'll soon be torn down. That doesn't keep people from going there. But you mustn't go there, Sandy. Not ever. Run along home now. Come on, Fritz. What's the matter, Fritz? I'm surprised at you. You're being as silly as Tom. I'll go alone. Young lady. Young lady. Vi. That's a lovely perfume you're wearing. It's no use. I know you're in here somewhere. I can hear you, too. Don't you think it's ridiculous to hide? Come down. There's something I want to say to you. Very well. If you won't, then I'll go up and find you. Listen to me, please. I don't usually give people advice, but Tom is a dear friend, and I want to ask you to leave him alone. Are you listening to me? You might at least have the politeness to answer. <laughs> My, that's a nasty laugh you have. What tricks are you up to now? Wait. Listen to me. You know you're worrying and frightening Tom half to death. It's not hard to sense how desperate he's getting. I know Meg doesn't concern you, but you wouldn't want to make an innocent person suffer, would you? I wish you'd speak more clearly. You're trying to make me sorry for you, I suppose. But I can't help thinking how foolish you are playing this absurd game. Stand still and let me talk to you, please. Cause those two people all the unhappiness you need to. It's time you stopped. You don't belong here, you know. Why don't you leave Tom and Meg alone and go back? 
What are you saying? I can't hear you. <laughs> what a fiend you are. You're not fooling me. I know exactly what you are. It's not fair. You're getting the party, the presents, the husband. I get nothing. Be nice to me, Peanut. In two more days, I'll be a married woman, and you'll miss me. I'll miss Tom more. Sandy. How's my family? Daddy! Am I too early or too late? I'm so happy you made it in time. You don't think I'd let my daughter marry without her favorite father being around now, do you? <laughs> well, roll up your sleeves and pitch in. The party's right after tomorrow's rehearsal. Hi, honey. Frank. <laughs> Where's the groom? He's not feeling well. What's the matter with him? He's been overworking. At the piano, I suppose. Please don't start that again. It's bad enough to accept a musician into this family, but a jazz musician is asking too damn much. Why don't you go to bed, dear? You must be tired. What's the matter with a jazz musician? Be still, brat. Poor Tom. you hear or something? I asked if you live here. In the lighthouse? No, on the island. On the island. Why do you want to know? Look, kid, I really don't care. I'm looking for a guy called Tom Stewart. Do you know him? What do you want him for? He won 200000 a sweepstakes ticket, and I'm here to give him the money. I don't believe you. Look, kid, do you know where he lives? What you looking for, Dad? Not much to see out there, huh? Oh, wow, this is a crazy pad. Aren't you lost, buddy? Oh, man, this sure is. Hey, now, wait a minute. What is this? Look, I don't want nothing from you, Dad. I really don't. She owes me a fin, that's all, and I thought it'd be nice to have. What are you talking about? No sweat, Dad. I don't want nothing from you. She owes me a fin, that's all. Wow, you sure have a nice pad, Dad. Now, look, I don't mean to be rude, but you'll either have to tell me what you're talking about or get out of here. Look, the blonde, the one with the... <laughs> she owes me some bread, that's all. There's nothing to get bugged about. What she does here is your business. <laughs> I can see you dig me, Dad. Look, I motor this chick, Vi Mason, over to the island. I got a boat. Now, when she asked me if I take her, well, I say okay, but she said she doesn't have the change. This is what she said. Okay, so we make a deal. Five bucks over and five bucks back. 
Now look, I haven't the faintest idea who or what you're talking about. Look, Dad, all I want is the bread. When she didn't show by morning, I figure I'd been had. And I know she didn't go back on the regular run because I asked the putt-putt jockey and he said no. Now, I'm a real square, Dad. I didn't remember the name of the guy she said. Today I remember. How do you like that? Tom Stewart. That's the name of the guy she said when we made the run. So, enough of this jazz, Dad. Come on. I have to leave. Get out. Well, maybe I better wait around until the chick shows. You'll do nothing of the... All right. Maybe it's worth it five dollars just to get rid of you. Here. There you go. What you do is your business, Dad. All I want is what's coming to me. There you are. Plenty of pickle? Yes, sir, plenty of pickle. Warm, Mr. Nelson. It's a very warm day. I think I'll have something light. Uh, egg salad sandwich and a glass of iced tea with lemon. Don't like sugar in my tea, but plenty of lemon. Well, how about a nice hamburger or a tuna fish salad? What's the matter with your eggs? Oh, well, there's nothing the matter with them. I just don't have any. I've been out of eggs for almost a week now. Kramer's hens just stopped laying. It's a funny thing. Nothing like this ever happened before, except once about the time the Samuels boy died. They just up and quit laying. Would you like a tuna fish salad? Just the iced tea. Right. Say, Dad, can I have a Coke? Right. The Hubbards had to send over to the mainland special to get some eggs for their party. Can't bake a cake without eggs. Speaking of the wedding, are you still there, Sandy? Yes, ma'am. Shouldn't you be at the rehearsal? Holy cow! Charge it, Mr. Nelson! You know, Mr. Nelson, I wish I could have my sight back long enough to see Tom and Meg married. They must be a lovely couple. I'd give anything to see them. They're a handsome couple, all right. Tom Stewart's marrying a beautiful gal. The nicest of families, too. Say, Dad, what did you say the handle of the guy getting spliced was? Tom Stewart. The girl's name is Meg Hubbard. And little Sandy will be standing here to my right, next to the bride. And then the groom will cross to her right, and you'll be standing here. The parents will be in their pews, and... May I help you? Yeah, I want to speak to Tom Stewart. Excuse me. You're interrupting a wedding rehearsal in there. Like I said, Dad, what you do is your business. I mean, it's crazy with me if you want to marry one chick and keep another one on the side for kicks. Wow. But I feel sort of a responsibility, seeing as how I brought your broad over on my tug. See what I mean? What are you driving at? Come on, Dad, don't you know? I gave you the money you're after. What more do you want? Well, it seems that our deal is in life is some renegotiation. Tom, what? hurry. We're waiting for you. Yeah, go ahead back. We'll pick it up later. Time, I got plenty of. Now...
be Mrs. Stewart. Isn't that right, Mr. Stewart? I'll be right back. Please, Tom. Just one more. Oh, I, uh... I wanted to get a drink. Yeah, I'll get it for you. Just one more number. I want to show you off. Started you, Tom, but candidates are the best kind. I had my mouth open and my eyes closed. This is gonna be the worst picture ever made. If you don't like it, I can take another. Oh, no. No, that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, let me look. No. Get a drink. Why are you so upset? I'm not upset. Well, something's bothering you. Is it another girl? You can tell me. I'll, I'll try not to be jealous. Jealous? Who could be jealous of Vi? She's dead. She doesn't exist. She's a, a perfume. She's a footprint. She's a hand. She's a, a face in a picture. Who could be jealous of Vi? You're talking crazy, Tom. Let me see the picture. No. You're not making any sense. That's her face between the two of us. I don't see anything. Except you and me. wonder the way Tom's been acting lately. Anything Tom does is all right. He's perfect in your eyes anyhow, isn't he? Oh, don't worry, Sandy. I love him. I suppose every girl has a few last-minute doubts. Because he's always around the lighthouse? Because he imagines things that aren't so. Everything will be all right. It's late. the window. There's a light up there. I wonder who it could be. A boy and a girl, probably. You wouldn't understand. I would, too. They used to go there to neck. Not anymore. Everybody says it's too cold and damp and smelly. Does Tom go there with anybody? Or does anybody meet him there? Now who's imagining things? You're right. That's probably only a reflection of the moonlight on a loose pane of glass. Over 
大会儿。What do you want? I want you, Tom. I want to save you from your own mistake. My only mistake was in knowing you. And the only way you could correct it was for me to die, wasn't it? It's not my fault you're dead. Isn't it? I couldn't have saved you. Couldn't you? Maybe you can make yourself believe that, but not me. I was there, remember? You had to shut me up so you could marry Meg. You got away with that, all right, but now what are you going to do? I'll never let you marry Meg. You belong to me, Tom. You belong to a ghost. That's the trouble with making one first slip. You have to go from bad to worse to keep it quiet. What would you do if Meg gets wise to you? Stop her the same way you stopped me? I didn't kill you, Vi. I never killed anybody and I never will. And once I'm married, I'm going to live a very happy, very normal life with Meg and with our friends. And there's really nothing you can do about it. Isn't there? You may have noticed I've found my voice now. I pick things up fast. I'm going to use it to tell the world about you. I told you, Tom, no one will ever have you but me. Stop it, Pi. Try and make me. Tom Stewart killed me! 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 In such a hurry, Dad. You're always in a hurry. You shouldn't be like that. Give me that. I just want to talk to you, Chum. A nice, friendly talk. That's all. Give me that. You look sick, Dad. Something's wrong. Look, are you going to talk to me or not? Let's get this thing over with. Just what is it you want? Like I said, Dad, all I wanted was coming to me. You know, the way it looks to me, we should be sort of partners. I help you, and you help me. I bring your playgirl over to the island, and I figure it's worth some sort of service to you to sort of buy something from me. Like a silent service, catch? The word you're reaching for is blackmail. That's not it at all, Dad. We should be sort of pals. I've done you a favor, now you can do me one. In other words, if I don't pay you blackmail, you go to my fiancé and expose my life of sin. Is that it? Well, you're saying it rather crude, Dad, but you're getting the idea. But it won't do you any good. I'm not going to pay you one lousy cent. In the first place, I don't know a girl named Vi. And even if I did, it wouldn't do you any good. Because, unfortunately, I'm not sharing my cottage with anyone. If it'd make you feel better, you can look for yourself. That's not necessary, Dad, not at all. You see, I already have. Well, then you know she's not here. Well, yes and no. You see, when you were so eager to come up with that five spot, I figured you were, well, anxious to keep everything sort of quiet-like. Now, when I find out you're getting spliced to another chick, well, the story's even getting better to read. Now, here comes the part I like the best. I do a little snooping when you're not around. Now, what do you think? I think... You still with me, Dad? Go on. You see, that's the punchline. That's the gimmick. If this doll Vi isn't hiding in your cottage, and she isn't any place else on the island, and she never left the island. Now, what do you suppose could have happened to her, huh? You tell me. <laughs> You're a comedian. Uh-uh. You're the one that has the rest of the answers. You know something? Everything you've just said is all bluff. You don't know a damn thing. That's not friendly, Dad. Not friendly at all. In fact, I thought you'd take a wrong outlook on things, so I sort of borrowed something from a friend of yours. Get out of here. I can see that you finally dig me, Dad.
we come up here for? So that you and I can have a little talk in peace and quiet. It's cold. Just what do you want? Five thou. Five thou? And don't tell me you know gut. Your future father-in-law is loaded. <sighs> Who are you talking to? You didn't hear anything? <laughs> I didn't hear anything. I'm waiting to hear something from you. They're closing in on you, Tom. You'd better take care of him right now. No. Is that your final answer? Well, I, I didn't... Give me a minute. He's so easy, Tom. Just as easy as I was. Go ahead. There's a piece of pipe behind you. One good blow is all it takes. You got rid of me, but you'll never get rid of him as long as he lives. He'll bleed you of every penny, Tom. And all the time you'll have it hanging over you. What if people find out? What if Meg finds out? You can't let him do it, Tom. You'll lose everything. Look, you've had enough time. Do I get the money or don't I? Yes, Tom. Does he get paid? No. All right. You know what's best. See what your chick has to say about this. Get him, Tom. Wait. You change your mind? Get him, Tom. No. What is it? Drop whatever you're doing and come here at once. All right. Oh, Sandy, we have to be at the church in 20 minutes and you're not even dressed yet. Never mind that now. Meg snagged her hymn. Come and hold it while I take it up. You'll make a lovely wife, Meg. Thanks. Meg, do you really love him a whole lot? Whatever makes you ask a thing like that? Last night you said you weren't sure. Well, I'm sure now. Oh, you'll remember to take the bouquet when I hand it to you, won't you? I'll remember. S suppose he'd done something awful bad. The way I feel now, I'd marry him no matter what. Oh, don't forget, you stand close behind me, but not too close. There, that's done. Mm -hmm. And you, young lady, get into your gown this instant. Mrs. Hubbard loaned us her ring in place of the one you lost, so that's okay. I've got the minister's fee here in my pocket, and everything's under control. So snap out of it. Okay, okay, I'll be all right. Then get that funereal look off your face. This is a wedding man. Cheer him up, honey. Well, that's... That's 
into a pretty dress, Sandy. You're really going to marry my sister, aren't you? I don't feel like that. I can't help it. Suppose you love somebody. Somebody who did something bad. And only you knew. Would you keep it secret? Well, good friends generally try to stand by one another. But what if it were something real, real bad? Real, real bad like what? Murder? gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God, signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church, it is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear of God. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. out on Meg. I'm not coming back. Sandy, what are you doing here? I followed you. Why did you have to kill him? I knew something would happen. I was against the marriage from the beginning. Let me help you with your gown, dear. Don't bother, Mother Sandy will help me. Sandy, help your sister. Where is Sandy? I thought she came home ahead of us. Well, if she did, she's not here now. I wish you hadn't seen it, Sandy. Now I'm afraid you'll tell everybody and I don't know what to do. Tell. How can I be sure of that? Good friends protect each other. Yes. But sometimes they can't help themselves. Things leak out. 
police hear about it, do you know what would happen if the police heard about this? I'd go to the gas chamber. Sandy. Sandy, why did you have to see it? I couldn't tell, but... No. Nobody could help any of it except me. I could have saved Vi. I could have put my hand out to her. Instead, I killed her. Sandy. Sandy, you know I love you very much, don't you? Thank you, Reverend. She isn't there. I can't imagine where she could have gone. Where's Tom? The least he could do is be here when Meg needs him. Can't you leave him alone? There's a light in the lighthouse. Sandy could be there. She talks about the place all the time. Oh, I don't think she'd go there at night, though. We'd better make sure. There. Let's go up and look at the sea. You're not afraid of me, are you? I never used to be. Come on, then. When the moon shines, you can see the whole island from up here. Why did you have to see it? Thank <laughs> you. 